All right, I've made a lot of build videos in my day, but this one might just be the strongest build that I have ever had the privilege of playing. The first person who showed this to me was my friend Fuzzy Cowie, so credit goes to him for kind of coming up with this. Um, but yeah, I'll go over it now. Talking about Sister of the Thorn because she's freaking OP, her passive ability, a cluster of radiance, Carillion is granted radiance, a free use of her career skill, every 60 seconds. That's in addition to her norm normal ult, by the way, so she gets two ults. Pretty good. Her career skill, Thornwake. Carillion conjures a thorn wall that hinders enemy movement. The thorn wall lasts for six seconds. She's also got a murder of spites. Carillion deals up to 50% more damage to wounded targets depending on their remaining health. This is going to be really important for this build. A Sustenance of Leechlings. Whenever another party member receives temporary health, while at full health, Kirillian gains temporary health instead. Again, going to be huge for keeping you alive. An Attendance of Munificence. All healing received by the party is increased by 25%. This is an excellent passive, and it helps everybody out in a big way. Essentially giving everyone a Boon of Shalia type effect. Really nice. As you can see, I uh, have the Sword and Dagger kind of in the background here. For that, I'm going for Killing Blows to restore temp health. Um, but the thing with this is this build is mostly range based, so we're not going to be meleeing a whole lot. But in the event that we do have to, I want killing blows for temp health. I want quick temp health, and killing blows gives me the fastest temp health possible. On her second line, Isha's Bounty, gaining health grants 5% power for 8 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. We're going to be running natural bond with this build because number one, we're not going to be meleeing a whole lot, so temp health is going to be, you know, pretty much just what our teammates make for us from a sustenance of leechlings and natural bond will proc this um constantly after you take you know a little bit of damage this will just keep going you'll have constant 15 percent extra power which is going to let you do big big range damage and then down on this line enhance power for range damage again boosting that range damage even further you can go with smiter if you are going to be wanting to melee a lot but I highly recommend Enhanced Power, just because you can never have enough damage. On her level 20 line, we're going with Radiant Inheritance. Consuming Radiance grants Carillion vastly increased combat potency for 10 seconds. Now, Radiant Inheritance was nerfed uh, about a week after Sister of the Thorn was released, because it was incredibly powerful. But it's still a really strong talent. It gives you attack speed, crit power, movement speed, and a power level bonus of plus 20% for all those stats. So that's still incredibly valuable and going to be very handy for what we're going to be doing with this build. On the level 25 line, Moria Higgs Doomsight gained three guaranteed critical strikes each time a career skill is used. So this doesn't just count for Sister of the Thorns ults, this counts for any member on a team. Um, so, you know, if you have like a Foot Knight and a Slayer, maybe a Battle Wizard, they're going to be ulting quite a lot. So you're going to be stacking and and uh, having lots of cr lots of crits. It's three crits for every ult that they use, which is really nice. And then down here, Blood Razor Thicket is what we're going to be going with today. It increases the Thorn Wall's eruption damage and makes it apply a bleed, but lower both size and duration. So this is the one that does a lot of damage, pretty much. It does some initial damage, and then a lot, and then a lot, and a lot of bleed damage afterwards. Um, it's pretty much the only choice if we're going to go for a high damage build which is what we're going to be doing. And with the talents all laid out, now let's get right into the gear. As I mentioned, Sword and Dagger is the weapon today. I have Power vs. Chaos on it, I have Block Cost Reduction on it, and I do have Swift Slaying. This weapon I am pretty much going to be using as like a shield. I am going to try to melee as little as possible because I want to save my crits for the Briar Javelin. And this is the key to this build. The Briar Javelin, when used in a ranged capacity with this setup, will be able to one-shot pretty much anything. I think you can one-shot anything except a Chaos Warrior. A Chaos Warrior is two uh, headshots, and I think maybe a Raider is like two body shots um, with crits, by the way. So you're going to be running 10% power versus Chaos, 20% crit power on the Javelin. On the Charm, I have another 20% crit power and another 10% power versus Chaos. We have Concoction on the charm, so you know, any kind of potion, you drink it, you chug it, you can solo a patrol, you can solo any monster, 
um, you will have the most damage on your team without even a, a, using your melee weapon doing this. It is insane how strong this stuff is. And the javelin, not only is it great for armor, not only is it great for monsters, not only is it fast, has a good reload time, it cleaves through hordes, it's absolutely incredibly powerful. And the whole reason we're using this is because Scrounger is just far and away, I'm convinced now, the best trade on this weapon. It's better than Hunter, it's better than Conservative Shooter, because as long as you have crits, you don't need to reload. If you crit with a Javelin and Scrounger, guess what? You get that Javelin back. So you don't have to reload at all, and you can keep pumping out crazy amounts of damage. With Concoction, you have all the effects, so you have the Concentration Potion, you have the Speed, and you have the Strength Potion, so you have boosted damage for a short amount of time, further boosted by Radiant Inheritance, Isha's Bounty, Enhanced Power, and it's a crit. With 40% extra crit power and 20% extra power versus Chaos, Guys, there's a reason that I think this is the strongest thing I've ever seen. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. On the necklace, we're going with plus two stamina and an extra 30% block cost reduction. This is just to give us a little more defense with the melee game. We're going to try to ignore, like, a couple clan rats if we can help it, because we want to save our crits for stuff that really matters, like specials, elites, monsters, things like that. And I do have Natural Bond simply to keep Isha's Bounty going. And because you're not going to melee that much. So Temp Health is pretty much dependent upon um, how much your team can help make for you. For the Trinket, I'm going with Cooldown Reduction, Stamina Recovery. Cooldown Reduction for your ult so you can get more crits, slash do more damage. Stamina Recovery so you can tank if you need to. Um, ignore that Explosive Ordinance. I was just, I was just way too lazy to change it. So um, take Shrapnel or Grenadier, either one of those. Um, shrapnel lets you do even more damage if you can believe it. Uh, Grenadier lets you possibly dupe a bomb, so that's always fun. So yes, guys, there you have it. Quite possibly the most powerful build I've ever seen, and it's a completely range-only, well, intended to be a range-only build. Um, you can melee if you like, of course, but you will have a better time saving crits with Radiant Inheritance if you mostly range. Of course, there are some situations where you'll have to melee, but range is very important for this. If you like this build video, consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video, leaving a comment. I have a Discord in the link down below, link in the description down below. Uh, consider joining that. I also have a Patreon if you want to support this channel and support what I do. Link is also in the description down below. I appreciate anything anyone is willing to uh, shill out for me. You get um, an extra video once a month for that, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this setup, if you've ever tried something like this. Um, once again, thank you to Fuzzy Cowie for showing me this, because this man is an elf main, and he knows his stuff. So, yes, this is, uh, this is pretty good. Take care, guys.